Greetings, aspirers to the stars, students of the multiverse, coalescers of space-time. I, Erwin, certified Time Lord, am here to instruct you on the combat essentials of Earth Romancer. Those of you well-versed in combat may already find basic mechanics familiar. For those of you who don't, I'm confident the other instructors will guide you further. Regretfully, I'll be unable to accompany you for every lesson. We are on a budget, after all. Moving on. Today, let us focus specifically on what makes combat in Earth Romancer unique. First, we'll cover what I believe to be the most defining aspect, projectiles. The way projectiles operate in Earth Romancer adds a completely new layer of depth to our dance. Earth Romancer features a button dedicated solely for ranged attacks. Each character has their own abilities, and using them costs energy, visible in the bottom bar shown here. Don't let the energy cost stop you. Energy regenerates quickly over time. Projectiles look quite strong, don't they? As you can see, projectiles are well suited for many situations. Some can be powerful ways to cover your approach while others have strong defensive anti-air capabilities. However, there is a caveat to using these attacks other than their energy cost. In Earth Romancer, every projectile, with few exceptions, can be easily nullified by a variety of evasive maneuvers, such as dashing, jumping, or diving. In fact, dash attacks like these have no trouble getting past them. If you rely heavily on ranged attacks for everything, your tactics become children's literary, or as they say, an easy read. The second topic we'll go over pertains to losing conditions. For demonstration purposes, we've shown two numbers increasing on the bottom upon receiving damage. The higher the number, the further you get sent flying from attacks. You get knocked out of bounds too many times, and you simple as that. So then, why are there two numbers, you ask? Allow me to elucidate. The numbers in red represent damage to your external defenses. For training purposes, let's just call it your shield. This value affects the amount of knockback you receive. The number below in white represents damage to your vitality, and it will never be higher than the damage to your shield. This number represents the limit to how much your shield can recover. Each attack does differing amounts to both your vitality and shield. Over time, your shield will gradually restore until it matches your vitality. There is one other way to heal damage. Connecting with a melee attack on your opponent instantly recovers your shield. This means that not allowing your opponent the chance to counterattack can be an even greater boon in combat. The term Zero to Death has a whole new legitimacy in Earth Romance. Finally, we will briefly cover the two modes of combat you'll encounter in Earth Romance. Red Shift and Blue Shift. Players may choose between these two modes of combat for each character before the game begins. Or they can even play a mixture of both modes and switch between them mid combat for the ultimate in flexibility and creative expression. In general, blue shift mode tends to be relatively simple to grasp. Opportunistic in nature, blue shift mode features robust defensive capabilities, better than average recovery, and familiar control. In contrast, red shift mode tends to be more complicated with an emphasis on unique mechanics. It's characterized by versatile offensive options, but relatively poor defense and recovery. Both modes are highly effective in the right hands, so choose which mode fits your taste and bring the most out of your personal style. Just as we've only scratched the surface of our observable dimension, there is much more to these mechanics than we can discuss in a timely manner. Should you continue your pursuit of mastery, there are sure to be competent instructors arriving soon with further lessons. 
It's been my privilege to prepare you on your journey through Zimsara. Until next time, my hopefuls.